People in India have very weak opinions held very strongly. Why does everyone in India want to be a YouTuber now? 99% of the everything you do for work is bullshit. You don't have to be the next Elon Musk. One guy that like, recently DM me is like, you're doing so much. F*** you. <laughs> I think you should drop out if you have leverage. I can tell you a solution to that. If you're stuck there right now. <laughs> I'm all yours. I'm all yours. Just hire people. Just <laughs> hire people. It'll start hurting, right? Because I spend today 20 lakhs out of my own personal pocket a year on my YouTube team. 20 lakhs just from my pocket right i could put this bill on avalon i can do all of that i don't want to do that it's like it has to hurt me hey guys welcome to take a pause with me varun dugirala today we're tapping into the entrepreneur's mindset with varun maya the co-founder and ceo of avalon and someone who truly digs into first principle thinking and so much more this is going to be a really exciting episode to listen to, especially for those who really want to tap into the scientific side of their minds. But before we get into that, I wanted to smash that bell icon and hit subscribe. Getting into my chat with Varun Maya. This is, you know, this is almost like a great way for me to start this one off because one of the things which I always enjoyed when you and I speak is that you have this tap on internet culture, right? You understand how things are going and, and you don't look at it like how everybody else looks at it. You look at it like a science. Um, and I remember kind of going to, I think, your other YouTube channel and, and you, you put over this and you experiment, you observe, you make conclusions and you repeat the same like in life and as an entrepreneur, the same way how science works. Yeah. Is that how you look at most things? Do you look at most things in your life like it's pure science kind of flowing? Yeah, I guess uh, it depends on what your goals from it are, right? Um, if my goals are f- from something are like art, I usually don't do not do very well at it. Or actually, I don't like stick long. Like I loved painting as a kid, right? Like drawing and painting. I used to draw like, you know, Dragon Ball characters. I, used to, I can draw Goku yeah. from memory today, right? The problem with that is it's not a competition sort of an unbounded task, right? It's like yeah. nobody look at it, nobody appreciate it, no followers to gain. Like there's nothing to do around it. So what happens is I get good and then I just drop it. Like, it's good, just like whatever. And I just let it go, right? But if there is something that's measurable, and that's the, the, the mm. crux behind science, right? You can measure. And when you can measure, you can compare, right? So the minute something's measurable, I find myself sticking longer doing that, right? Mm. So with game design... I, w- I just always had it as a hobby until I decided, okay, let me make my first, you know, sort of quick game or something like that. Because then it's measurable. It's like, there's an output, people can play with it. And I had to put it out. I was like, even today it's on, it's on itch.io. It's a game called Mumbai Make Hadsa. Actually, it's just called Hadsa, right? And uh, games about you in this weird Mumbai apartment and you go through the motions. I'm going to spoil the story for people who, who haven't played the game. <laughs> it's like you go through the apartment and, you know, the first scene is like you in this room it's like this old school mumbai apartment okay and you press the uh, there's a there's a uh, radio and you press the radio and then it starts playing ajeeb da sita hai and then you know you go to the next room and so- suddenly somebody's like dead on the floor right and you're like mm. what is this actually you see a person killing a woman like a man mm. killing a woman right and then in the next room you find the man just sitting down like this you know with with his hands in his head and he's in the chair, but then everything else in the room is like floating. All the other chairs are floating, tables are floating. And then finally, there's one last door and you go inside and it's a bathroom, right? Mm-hmm. And you open the door and you see a mirror. And in the mirror, you see that you are the person that got killed, mm-hmm. right? So I remember I told you in the second scene, there's this lady that was dead. That was That's yeah. you. So it's a, uh, I enjoyed that not because of the, like it's art, right? It's a story I'm telling and it's a story mm-hmm. through the, the format to tell the stories games. Uh, but I didn't really enjoy it till I put it out. I was like, I want to put it out. I want to see reviews, right? And I put it out on itch.io. It's like a website to put out games. And then I got reviews from like random people and they made YouTube videos of that. It's like people don't even know that I did this, right? But I had to do it and I had to get some sort of feedback or review from it, right? Which is, I think, what uh, what I live for. And if it's not measurable, it just doesn't make sense to me. I know that's the opposite of what everyone says, but that's how I do it. No, but... And it's interesting, right? Because it's also because I feel that there are no absolute rules, right? Um, 
like when you spoke about making a game, I still think back and I'm from a slightly older time, yeah. if I put it that way, where for me in school, I remember this, that um, I was once asked to make, you know, we used to code in basic. Yeah. And I was asked to make a program where if you press one, you get the temperature, you press two, you get the chance of rainfall and, and three. And I would program these random ads that would pop in between. So between you clicking that button and something else coming between, I mean, that's the level to which we could actually do it with the systems we had. Yeah. And for me, that was fun because I was having creative fun with yeah. something that was technical. Yeah. Um, so in a, in a slightly different sense, I relate to what you're saying because I feel we we look at measurement online as a bad thing, but in many ways, it's giving you that constant feedback about what you can learn from because because human beings, you all thrive on feedback, right? We thrive on understanding how things are reflecting back to us. Yeah. Um, so my question to, actually, to you is that when you go off the digital realm, um, do you look at communication in, in, in a similar sense? Um, my, my life's very weird, right? And my life's weird for, for a bunch of different reasons, but I've always been like an internet native. I've always been a digital boy, right? It, I know like now it's like starting to catch steam, but I've, I've been it like I've been misunderstood for so many years because I had access to the internet at like when I was seven. Right, mm -hmm. where my none of my friends had access to it. The best they'd have is like maybe a computer, and they could play some games or like you know the the old uh, you know PlayStation One and stuff. But I had the internet, and I was like, there's a whole world out there, right? So nobody understood me. So I feel like for for once, like the world actually understands me now, right? Like all the entire like 18, 19, 20 year olds are like me. They grew up with a computer. Yeah. They grew up on the yeah. internet. They're like, bro, I have like a million voices in my head. So I feel like. Um, does it translate in my real life? I don't know if I have like a very specific real life. I, I know that sounds dumb, but I don't know. Like for me, it's a, it's a blur. It's a blur, right? Like, and even my wife, um, even though, you know, it's sort of like your relationship is supposed to be separate. Like for most people, it is, right? For everyone, it's like, oh, they have a career and then, you know, they have a home family life. Mm -hmm. I brought her also into this, right? I'm like, YouTube yeah, will... In the video. Yeah, I'll be like, YouTube, <laughs> let's do it together, right? So uh, yesterday, somebody put up a comment on on the old video right and we did a video with nas terry like mm. nas heart 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 tum dono bakwas <laughs> right so for us it's like an end it's like something we do together so we're enjoying it's not like we're not having fun like uh, you know i believe this right anybody who doesn't like measurement and i know online mm. everything's about measurement right it's like you versus that person whatever right i feel like people who don't want to be measured who want to get out of the game of measurement are just not humble enough that's what I personally believe, right? I don't mind being measured in a place and coming last. As long as you have awareness of it and be like, I suck at this. Obviously, I'm going to be last. It's fine, right? Today, even like there's a stack ranking, right? Nobody, everyone roughly knows what's, what rank they have like in the global sphere of things or whichever arena that you're playing in. But nobody wants to admit it. Right? I'll be the first to put my hand up and like, I think I, I'm here. Right. And maybe I'll be wrong, like a little bit higher or lower, but I'm okay with being measured. I'm okay with being stacked. Right? And if I'm, if I'm wrong, I'll be like, bro, I'll work towards like being right. Right. Like, and I feel that's what measurement gives you. I think measurement gives you humility. Measurement gives you humility where if you are okay with being judged, right. Most people are just not okay with being judged right? because it obviously it causes like all sorts of chaos in the brain. Right. But if you're okay with being judged and if you're okay with being honest of where you stand, I think it's fine. Now, sometimes people get it wrong, right? Some people, like, especially when entrepreneurs start out their career, nobody's going to believe in them. So yeah. in their head, it's like, and this is what I struggled with the first few years of my life, right? I'm like, potential's here, but world thinks I'm here. Mm. But that was important. You, you want to be in a place in life where you have high potential, but, you know, in your head and world thinks you're here because that's a chance for you to prove it. That's a chance for you to work upwards, right? If you don't like measurement, you'll be, you'll always be stuck here because you'll always be like, you know what? World's anyway not going to believe whatever. If I go online, I'm going to be measured. If I'm going to any arena, I'm going to be measured, right? Today, what I like is I feel like I had this much potential and I lived up to a decent amount of it. And I lived up to a decent amount of it in the name of measurement, right? And yeah. I think once you've been through that journey once, you get the ability to do it the next time without this fear of measurement because you already know where you rank and you know that once every 
five years from now, entire like ecosystem is going to change. There are going to be new people who are higher up, new people like old people who are really big are like nowhere, right? So I feel like that constant people to people measurement is important as long as you you have that humility about it that you shouldn't take it too seriously. It doesn't literally mean that you're worse than the other person. It means in this dimension, right? when yeah. in the rank of entrepreneurs, let's say Kunal Shah is better than me, right? Mm. People don't like admitting that. And I'm just like, yeah, th- today it's true. Five years ag- later, it might not be, right? But for today, it's true. And it gives you a, a very accurate compass. Uh, but I feel like that's the 30-year-old me speaking. I'm 29, but that's the, that's the me from the, from the future speaking. Um, so the interesting response to that is my, the 39-year-old me, um, when, I'm, when I was listening to you, I also realized that, and it, this has been a recent thing for me, right? Um, I'd always look at the metrics. Um, you know, you're running an agency business. You look at okay, which other agencies doing good work, India, globally, etc. Yeah. But I feel at some point there's been a slight addition to this because I've always believed in that form of measuring yourself. Yeah. Um, it's the fact that as much as you're all in the same category, even if you are in the same space, what I feel the reason why we all feel the pressure a lot more, or, or, or many people feel the pressure, is because you don't look at the nuance that. There is always, it's, it's never going to be apples to apples, right? Yeah. There's going to be a slight deviation somewhere there. Yeah. And I think that lack of understanding that nuance yeah. um, often pushes you away from even trying in the first place. Okay, I can't compete with this person. Like I can never, I cannot be a Kunal Shah. So why should I even try? Yeah. Versus saying one thing, what he's doing, I'm not going to do exactly what he does because A, that would not be a smart plan. Yeah. Um, but we, because we forget that part, we don't realize that part, we often almost like run away from even trying or, um, and that's where the pressure really loads up. What do you think? I think, um, why, I mean, think about this, right? Like you go to random people on the street, you ask them, what do you like more, Swiggy or Zomato? Yeah. Everyone will have an answer. <laughs> Everyone will be like, yeah, I like Swiggy, I like Zomato. I'm like, why? And My choice depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is people in india have or maybe across the world have very strong or or very weak opinions held very strongly mm. right so they're like i really like swiggy I'm like why oh they have better delivery they have better this they have better that and i'm like each argument can be dissected right better delivery actually they both use the same delivery boys right then they'd be like oh they have better branding i'm like they both have great branding. They be, okay, they have better social media. I'm like, they both literally hired mm. and both social media people from each other, right? I'm like, yeah. okay, they have, finally, it comes down to something bu- that's bullshit, right? Or they have better color, right? This one Zomato's red and the other I one's... I don't like orange or I don't like red. Yeah, much yeah. Red. And then finally, like, one honest person be like, I really like Zomato's. Zomato's this thing called Zomaland. It's mm. like this carnival or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I, I went to that. I like that. So I order from Zomato. In reality, it's like, I think... When you get to a certain level of scale, Swiggy versus Zomato, Ola versus Uber, it's just choice and positioning in your head, right? Yeah. And everyone's position of a particular company in the head is very different. Even And, and it, I think some companies have done it very well, right? Like if you look at Apple versus Windows, that's a very mm-hmm. clear positioning. You look at Apple versus yeah. Android, right? Very clear positioning. So I feel like yeah. the clearer differentiation you have in somebody's head, the better you do. So I feel, and, and this is something that, you know, we've learned with the new channel as well. You can copy the format but you can't do it like we do it mm. right you don't have yeah. the, the personality to do that right so i feel like the more personality you infuse into something the more it becomes yours the more it becomes unique um yeah. and that's the difference between something that's bounded and unbounded right i feel like this like game of followers let's say it's a very bounded game you have 5000 you have 10000 right but then there's a question of quality of followers you could take like any beauty influencer who's like 500k has more followers than me Right, but yeah. who would pull better branded deals? I would, right? If I were, you know, into the into that thing, right? So I feel like your who you are matters to everyone, from the brand to people to you know businesses who want to talk to you to you know on, other entrepreneurs who want to talk to you. Who you are matters, right? And I mm-hmm. feel like people forget that nuance when they just compare followers, right? I have never ever seen anybody say, "Oh, I'm going to get 200k followers." And I'm just going to do everything it takes to get followers and just do, you know, like, you know what you'll, what you'll end up doing? You'll end up making meme content. You'll end up making just, yeah. you know, like putting up cat gifs or something, but that's the easiest way to get followers, right? Yeah, exactly. So I feel like um, that nuance matters. And I also feel like, at least in my life, 
it's always been about somebody might be bigger than me right now i know where i stand but i also know that maybe it's not exactly the same path that i have to take right maybe like for example if kunal shah tried to make games he would do a terrible job right so maybe you know why am i comparing myself with capital raising ability right or why am i comparing myself with you know being a fintech i mean you know you can you can get to the nitty gritties right and yeah. then i realized where that comparison comes from for most people right not for me but for most people at this point is from the media right because the media is like constantly celebrating x person or y person why does everyone in india want to be a youtuber now every kid in india wants to be a youtuber yeah. right why because that's what they see on tv all the time right so yeah that's their celebrity exactly so it's it's more and the word celebrity is a is a function of is is a play on the word celebration mm. right so what we celebrate we sort of you know try to become what the world celebrates we're like oh that's great let's do that and and this just evolves with generations right like when i was growing up we, everybody wanted to be a music channel vj like i wanted to be a vj at some point of time i'd look at a nikhil chinappa or a sais brocha saying i want to be one of them and so i think the only layer the internet added is that it's in a way gamified life yeah right um you added metrics but also it's taken it back and forth and obviously we're going into other spaces as well but i want to flip this around and ask you that in the middle of all of this to actually build things yeah to actually be an entrepreneur requires a certain kind of mindset yeah. right so how how would you say from another i'm going to flip this actually a little bit more um for you what really has been the core ingredients for you to kind of build that because you know you've been on this journey a, a couple of times and um the more i speak to you the more i realize that you're fully in that space um what really is a part of an entrepreneur's mindset i feel like um i can't speak for every entrepreneur i can speak for myself it's a bunch of things right i think first i think this is the least important thing but there is this nafrat or hate towards just working for somebody else like i have high potential i don't want to like i don't want to be given orders right and i will do anything mm. needed to kind of avoid orders that's how it started out when i was young but i feel like that's necessary but not sufficient to be an on, to be a good entrepreneur right i think yeah. beyond that is also like standing for something right you need to really care about some problem in the world and say i hate this problem so much that i'm willing to dedicate the next n number of years to it and you can't start out with saying oh i really find this problem cool so i'm going to do it because if you do that you're going to get exhausted in one year so long term mm-hmm. marathon right like it's not a sprint so if you say oh i really enjoy this i'm going to do this you'll do it for a year and then you get exhausted that's why when a lot of people quit college and say i'm going to be a dancer i'm like are you sure you're going to enjoy being a dancer 7 years later when it gets boring i'm not sure I spent time with Nas Daily recently. Every time Nas Daily does a, his name is Nusair. So every time Nusair does a video, he sits in front of the camera and he's like, "I am never doing this again." And then he shoots <laughs> the video, right? He's so exhausted. He's like, "I don't want the camera on my face," right? So every job you need to have endurance, and I feel the best in the world are just people who can endure it longer, right? And you're only going to endure something if you truly feel it's a problem. Like if you had like let's say somebody had a parent and that parent had a heart attack and that really affected you and shook you in a way and you're like building a heart attack detection company you will do it and i will back you if i were to invest in a company i would back you because i'm like you give a shit about the problem 8 yeah. years later your mom's going to haunt your dreams and you're going to be like you know i wish i could have done something about it so i feel like you also need that so it, it's the hate because you can also use that and go work at a company that work like maybe apple right which does the heart attack detection but i feel it's that's not just that right i think it's it's you also need to hate working for somebody else i think if you have these two you should be good enough you should you know and obviously a bias towards action right you need to be able to build something you know i love the fact that you said endurance right and I, because i feel that's often not spoken about enough um we talk about oh you got to have like vision and you got to have like the billion dollar idea and everything else but and, and you have to have the ability to kind of it's almost like a marathon runner's mindset i i i speak to friends who and i always wanted to try it out um i might actually do that sometime soon um to actually run, how do you run a marathon because um 
I've never been a person who enjoyed running and, I, and now I'm starting to bring that up and I've realized that it takes a certain kind of mindset to continue to stick to that. Even though at times you get bored, at times you get tired, many times you want to give up. Uh, but you're sticking to it. You are like, it doesn't matter. I'm going to keep moving. And it's not really about the end goal, is it? Because um, I don't think it's about the goal. I think... Um... At least in my life, that, that answer is a little bit nuanced. I think it's also a function of how much personal capital you have. When I started my career, I had nothing, right? Like, you know, I, I was in college, I was freelancing. I was making money, freelancing. Mm-hmm. But it's not like I can't retire on that money, right? Mm-hmm. Um, then when you like go after a business, you try to sprint, right? Because you're like, I'm going to try and do the thing that makes the most amount of money fastest. So what every kid is doing in the world today, right? Like, okay, this thing, this thing's going to make money. Let me do this, right? And you, and I've done this in the past as well, right? When I was very young, like 23, 20, super young. So I would put, put a goalpost and I'd be like, I'm going to run to this goalpost as quickly as possible, make as much money, bank this much. And my number, the secret number in my head is like, oh, I need like four crores in life. Mm. And then I will like build like a, you know, crazy business. So I feel it's a function of that. And today as I'm nearing 30 and, you know, I've saved up some money, I think, if I take the next shot, okay, it is going to be something truly massive, right? It's going to be like, it has to be something I truly stand for. I don't mind taking three extra weeks to launch it, talking to customers, whatever, figuring out if it's like a problem worth spending 10 years of my life on, rather than just, you know, bias for action, sprinting as quickly as possible. Paras Chopra, the founder of Wingify, actually had a, he had a, uh, an article about this where he said that in the beginning of your career you sprint to action very quickly and then people who never start they take forever and then you know they, they don't they don't ever start it's just a flat line yeah. but the best takes some amount of time some amount of thinking time some amount of analysis time then they start right so that lead time is important and also if I were to do something for the next 10 years I'd really think about it right this YouTube channel is something that I've thought through we spoke about this last week or the week before that. I'm not sure when. I thought yeah. through it. I asked 30 people. I was like, okay, this, I, I, I've done more homework for this than I've ever done in my life, right? And the goal was just produce a perfect product. Mm. The, the, the way you're going to measure this perfect product, going back to the first thing we ever spoke about, was retention. The amount of retention this gets. If this gets great retention, it's perfect product. Otherwise, I drop it, you know, find a new product to kind of sell because you're early enough, right? You can... It's easy to maneuver a small boat. It's hard yeah. to maneuver a massive ship, right? It's like if you take a very large creator and the creator starts doing something very different on their channel, it becomes something totally different, right? And and your yeah. customers will be like, oh, you've changed. Or your audience will be like, you've changed. So I feel like a level of nuance can only come once you've accomplished a minimum base goal. So for me, forget the money part, right? Let's talk about uh, followers. I think 100K followers, I'm happy, right? That's enough. Now, next time I do it, it has to be 10 million. Right. That's just where I come from. No. You know, this also makes me think about a few things, right? Because I often thought about, and I feel this is a second time entrepreneur problem also sometimes is that, um, you know, I've done it once. The first time I had zero idea what I was doing. So um, in our case, we didn't really know what we were doing. So we just said, okay, wait, music channels are stop, going to stop playing music. Where's the fun stuff happening, happening online? Let's go do that. Yeah. So, there was no plan. The only point was let's survive. Let's make enough money to pay the bills, eventually make enough money to pay salary and eventually make enough money that we have some profit. I mean, that is literally the plan I would say for the first four or five years of the business. Um, but when I think about it now, um, some of the things you said really resonate, right? It's about really trying to understand, okay, what will I obsess over for, let's say the next decade, next five years, seven years, eight, ten, even, even longer. Uh, and what I truly go deep into saying, okay, I want to really get to solving that big problem there. Um, and then using all tools and using, not being okay with failing with it, being okay with seeming like that. But the tendency with this mindset, because I'm kind of, I go through that very often lately, is to be stuck in procrastination. Like you're stuck in trying to perfect the idea before you actually go into action. Um, and that's very easy to fall into. Um if you're really obsessive about a certain thing, but you're not really sure what angle to go towards it. I can tell you a solution to that. If you're stuck there right now. I'm all ears. I'm all ears. <laughs> Just hire people. 
just hire people it'll start hurting right because i spend today 20 lakhs out of my own personal pocket a year on my youtube team 20 mm. lakhs just from my pocket right i could put this bill on avalon i can do all of that i don't want to do that it's like mm. it has to hurt me because now if i have those people and i converted a part of my house to a youtube studio sort of thing right uh, the thing that you know you probably convert your neighbor's house <laughs> i'll have to convert my uh, i'll have to rent for a room in his house <laughs> <laughs> yeah so <laughs> I have these people staying in my house. Like I've hired these people. I'm spending money on them. I mean, if I procrastinate, I'm just going to waste money, right? And I'm going to be wasting a room. My privacy is being invaded. So yeah, just like spend money on it. Start hurting immediately. <laughs> That's a good way to kind of put that pressure on yourself. Um, yeah, because I have been a serial procrastinate. So. I think I struggle with a bunch of things which I feel a lot of entrepreneurs do. Um, I think in general, people who are working kind of go through it. Right? Is that is that mixture of at points you will procrastinate when you want to make a decision, you will doubt it, hmm. and then you'll hold back. And as you get older, I feel one thing that comes in is your appetite for risk goes lower. Yeah. Um, and the closer I've gotten to forty, uh, which is now like literally like two months, what one and a half months away. Yeah. Um, and have had a kid, so things come in. I'm like, okay, I, am I okay to just waste this money right now, or am I going to take that jump? Yeah. Um, and I think it comes at different stages for different people. I feel for some people, it comes on very early on, saying, okay, can I even like put that pressure on myself? Yeah. Um, so I feel I I love your solution because that's a great way to kind of put pressure on yourself. Um, but is there a way for you kind of tell yourself that no? just get into it and get your hands dirty um and then we'll figure it out which i think is the best way to kind of go ahead with this which is what i feel has always kind of worked for me um what do you think yeah i mean i would spend money on it i do it asap <laughs> right and it it doesn't have to be something that hurts it could just be something that's uncomfortable you could spend like 2 lakhs an annum on it 10k a month right because think about it right you you buy a subscription for 10k a month what are you going to do Either you're going to use you're that gonna, thing, you better use that thing, or you're going to cancel it. Yeah, I've taken a few subscriptions recently, which I don't know why I took because I wanted to watch one video, and I'm like, I have this for the year. Yeah. Um, I saw the most bizarre subscription. This is random segue, which said monthly was three ninety nine and yearly was five ninety nine, and I'm like, this doesn't make any <laughs> sense. I understand this is this is literally like barter rates happening here, and I want to kind of go towards it. Yeah. Um, I took the yearly. So I was like, "What if I want to watch something else here?" And I know I won't. It's like a channel which I would never watch otherwise. Yeah. But uh, I agree with you that it it adds up. Yeah. Yeah, I think it should just hurt. And you know, that's one thing I'm worried about, right? Like, this as I get older, right? I feel it's not the your risk of appetite doesn't get smaller because of money. I feel it just gets smaller because you have family responsibility that kicks in. Love yeah. kid, you'll have this thing, and the way I've done it is so far just like pulled my wife into it. And like now this is a this is a, we have to do this. <laughs> this is, this is a now. family thing yeah. now, right? Yeah. This is like the date is at the studio. Us shooting a video, right? Um, I feel like when you have kids, that's more difficult. I also like there's also one curious question I have for you, right? I read this article or tweet by Paul Graham. He said that the minute you have kids, like this firmware unlocks in your head. Mm. Right. Suddenly, you become like a father, right? And yeah. you start thinking completely differently about life. Suddenly, you go into preservation mode. You're like, I need to preserve this thing. Um, <clears throat> he also said that that it's great, but it also drops ambition hard. Mm. Have you seen that happen? So, I don't think it drops ambition. It makes you look at things a lot more carefully. And I think the like for me at least, um, and I know that financial security becomes a large. focus once you do have a kid because you kind of thinking about okay certain amount has to be kept away but for me what i've actually looked at a lot more is time um would i take on something that would have me spend less time with leia um i wouldn't um so for me it's it's a it's a line in my um decision box uh and i know it's not for a lot of people and i'm not judging anyone who takes that call um i feel with kids it's never about the quantity it's about the quality of time so you will literally have a like great weekends and just be not around in the weekday and they'll be fine yeah. um but i feel that's for me it was automatically a time switch more than a money thing cuz 
for me i've always been this very conservative like i don't own any crypto for anybody out there i don't um i never took the plunge and i and i keep thinking to myself why didn't i take it i just never took it i mean my money was in everything else and i was like i'll leave it there i'll figure this later on um so i've always been this conservative person with my own money never was in business in business i'm like let's go try like jump off that like cliff and figure a way to switch that parachute right um so for me that conservativeness kind of was already there so which means the money part was reasonably secure um but i think for me it's time so a lot of my decisions like me not building a podcast studio is simply the fact that if i'll be there recording rather than here right now at home where she can pop in and say hi and go i think there's a way around that now and the way around that is to convert your house into a studio this is what i've done yeah. right and yeah. my goal is so uh, either i do a second read like the next one one and a half years or you know i have some some plans around i i, I have a clear path towards liquidity at avalon now because we're making quite a bit of money right mm. so what i'm going to do is i'm planning to buy a house maybe th- like two or three floors right and then the second and third floor like maybe the third floor is where i stay second floor studio f- first floor or ground floor it's called living in bangalore by the way <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> i guess that's that's an advantage of bangalore right where i can actually think yeah. of like having a because so, i i hired this one guy from pune who came here and like he lives in mumbai pune and he was like how much is the rent for your house and i was like whatever and he's like bro for this sort of house you'll end up paying like 2 lakhs in mumbai yeah. and i was like interesting <laughs> there is this point and i feel it's 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 an important thing to talk about is that there's a point where in life you get comfortable yeah and it takes a little bit for you to disrupt it when you do and 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 when you spoke about age or i think what also happens is that as you progress in life whatever your career might be whatever you want to be doing um you get comfortable with just what your job gives you um, what you have at home and the tendency is to not ruffle that up um but i feel what we all should try and do and it shouldn't i don't think it's necessarily just a work thing i think it's a life thing right um can you kind of ruffle that up every so ever so often um so that you don't get stuck like for me to like the last two years has been comfortable being at home so i'm like do i want to go? I, i know that's the actual factor i've actually reflected on this i think the real factor of in many ways of also not doing that of another apartment is that um but the tendency for us as human beings is to become comfortable in a spot and then your head's telling you that why do you want to fuck with this now again like everything seems to be fine you can figure it out um and it's that reflex of playing safe um it's like that defense when you can actually go front foot and loft it but you might get caught and also if you really like double click on it right i also think like 99% of the enti- everything you do for work is bullshit all of us yeah. right it's yeah. if you really zoom into it you're like okay if you have, if you have enough money to eat and like you know enough money if you have a house let's assume um yeah you're done like you don't have to listen take people's shit you don't have to work you don't have to be the next elon musk it's just it's just uh, it's a make believe thing right and the more time you spend on twitter like everyone will try to convince you oh, this person raised 100 million this person did this this person fucking went to mars and you're like oh shit compared to going to mars i'm not doing enough right mm. and i and i know that some people feel that way about me because one guy that like, recently dm me is like you're doing so much fuck you <laughs> right <laughs> and and then i like sometimes i just think about it right like, i'm like it's not important if you're happy where you're happy if you're happy like, let's yeah. say with the daughter and doing this i don't think it's necessary to like build something big or build the next business or whatever right exactly i feel like for me the reason i want to do it today is probably because i don't have kids right probably mm-hmm. because the way i've arranged avalon everyone lives in the same building we spend mm-hmm. more on rent here than most companies will spend on their offices pan india we spend a yeah. shit ton of money right on rent like eight apartments now so uh, everyone lives in the same place it's convenient for me i don't drive unless i go to a meeting i literally press the lift button and i'm in the office one of the apartments is the mm-hmm. office right so i feel like you can also organize your life in a way where it's still comfortable okay. and i think the best youtubers at least right if you're interested in i know i know you're interested in that you know line of yeah. or doing things i feel the best youtubers have gotten big because they've been consistent they've just taken one product and been super consistent about that product right every youtuber is brilliant and done one or two videos that have gone viral just 
they've given up after that or like and i know very average creators i don't want to take names but like super duper average creators that have done well because it's just done the same thing stop. a million times right because they're like if i don't do this i have nothing else right so yeah and what you said about just like even travel time right like rohit and i had this rule early on when we started off saying we won't have a travel more than a kilometer to the office yeah um and we stuck to that largely for 13 years till now when i mean obviously like so so a large part of the company so we spent to corporate headquarters and all that stuff has happened but um till the pandemic um we stuck to it and i agree about the consistency but also because at some level um you're going to get some of those peaks and i feel that often times people who get that peak in the beginning are the ones who struggle the most later on yeah um whereas if you had that initial part where you have kind of struggle through a bunch of it and you finally get it like let's say when you're like i don't know for me it was podcast night right? 25 27 40 episodes in when you finally get that first big peak yeah and then it becomes consistent yeah then you value it because you've been through that 40 also you enjoyed that initial period of like figuring it out yeah um and i feel you often forget that part of it um and it's the same way i look at like college right um like as much as i said engineering was terrible for me um i didn't drop out did you go to hostels i'm uh, sorry did you go to the hostel uh no i was in the hostel i was living this like i was in pesit in bangalore yeah uh and i was living in this paying guest outside for a while yeah because i i spent longer than you supposed to do and eventually like i think an apartment yeah nice yeah and i know you have perspective on dropping out as well like you've spoken about it in the past um which is not necessarily traditional which everyone says no you should drop out if you have passion to do it i'm like no guys don't drop out but what's your perspective i think you should drop out if you have leverage like if i have this ishan sharma once came to me right uh, before he dropped out he asked me the question should i drop out and i was like you have 400000 subscribers you're already making a crore a year on brand deals mm-hmm. yeah, if you hate it leave it it doesn't matter it's of no use worthless to you right but it's not the same for like any random kid who wants to drop out right like if you're some tier 3 kid and you have no social mobility up you have no network you should definitely not drop out because nas told me this very recently right and it just made so much sense He's like put this thing in compartment in a compartment for me he's just like people always want to associate with the higher brand you should always associate with the bigger brand right if you're from a like if you're like a very big youtuber you've associated with youtube you don't need your college you can abandon it if you are yeah. somebody who has no brand you need whatever brand you can get if you get an iit drop this brand go to the iit if you get harvard go to harvard right so everyone associates with the higher brand like i associate with bloomsbury right i got 5% royalty on that book mm. that's back all the way back then but i was like hey this is higher brand right this brings me into and that story is has been far more powerful than whatever i've been paid from bloomsbury right 100% and same for you right exact same thing for you right so yeah. uh if you have leverage i think what leverage truly is is some association with the higher brand or a skill that gets you association with the higher brand so higher brand wants some skill ready to pay you for it airbnb wants something ready to pay you money for it so you can come work for them then you can drop out because airbnb already wants you right and once you've done once you've worked at an airbnb or a microsoft or it, like even a half decent company now your career is made because you don't need to go to tell, and tell the next employer i studied at xyz college because they're not going to care you can just be like i did ui ux at microsoft then you're done like that's a welcome ticket higher brand right yeah a lot of people want to drop out simply because they hate college but they don't have the brand right or no brand association in any way outside of that college why would you drop the one thing you have right so it's a very situational thing and i tell people please look at leverage and then you know move yeah and and, and i also feel what college kind of gives you is the ability to kind of also build a close group of friends who become your friends before you thought of leverage even yeah right um and i feel like i still take that i still have the same set of friends from like post grad hang with even now um i think that stuck to me because none of us were anything um before because any as much as you make friends post that there is always that small layer of it's it's a work association it's something you're doing 
um you'll always have that at the back of your mind it's never going to be Im- I mean, implicit expectation here. it's like an implicit yeah. expectation to yeah i get i get what you say yeah and and at some level it's um, unbiased as much as unbiased can be because you have lots of biases that come with that as well yeah. um and and i bring this up also because i feel one of the things that i've realized in the last couple of years is that what people are truly trying to kind of latch on to especially with creating and doing stuff on the internet is to really build community right yeah. to really find people you resonate with and kind of communicate with and kind of just talk to like half the people i chat with on on messages or someone messaging me some problem they're having in life and i'm like half the time i'm like i'm like not a therapist and tell about how i've dealt with this um because i'm reasonably open about how i've dealt with most issues in life um and i see that like people just want someone to talk to yeah. Yeah. and i don't know if the internet's contributed to that or is it just like we we see it more because of the internet yeah i think um people have always needed that right and i think it's mm-hmm. that's best done physically i don't think text messages is as good as you sitting down you know i agree having lunch with a person and saying you know this is better and sometimes like i do like everyone lives in the same building right me my employees my wife everything sometimes i go to one of my co-founders my my tech co-founder and i just sit with him and i talk to him about life mm. and like bro i'm coding can you like leave me alone <laughs> right so um i just everyone needs that and and sometimes just f- to express themselves right um yeah. one thing i found is that the main reason we we do the entire social media thing is for that is in the quest of that just to build that small community just to have somebody look up to you just to have somebody you can talk to in case you're like struggling and to be validated in a way right yeah. the words yeah. john peterson keeps saying this right he's like forget about the words said in a fight forget about the words said figure out the underlying current usually when couples fight it's not about the thing they're fighting about it's some underlying yeah. current that you have to like you know magnify i feel um, the underlying current on social media is just people want connection right mm-hmm. people want somebody to talk to somebody to listen to them somebody to validate uh, their thoughts and when that happens it's great when that do- doesn't happen it like leads to like hate comments and trolls and you know rubbish yeah i feel it's th- internet doesn't change anything about human biology right it's just human biology I playing at a grander scale <laughs> we less like to make it the villain i feel um i i i i brought that up specifically for this because it's an easy target to say oh this is because of the internet but i'm like this has been happening all along we just never saw it yeah because you were that lonely kid in in school who didn't have friends but you didn't have the internet as a way to access people beyond that classroom yeah um and so look at that side as well but Yeah this this stuff has been there all the time. Yeah. I just want to ask you like a how do you take a pause? <laughs> um my work is very meditative. My work is very meditative. And I feel you can't re- like I think when people think take a pause they think it's a physical pause. They think you got to sit down and close your eyes and do this, right? Mm. I feel uh the human mind can never be idle and i've tried right and i'm not not just like meditation and i like meditating the only problem is you can't get me to do it consistently like i'll do it two days third day i'll be like bro it's boring i need to go yeah. right and i feel like a lot of people use meditation online as sort of like a tick measuring contest it's like i meditate longer than you i meditate more than you it doesn't matter right yeah. um i feel the human mind and if you've studied the human mind like the default mode network it goes to rest when you're at work this is old horror movie i watched and there's a line that i take back and i tell everybody work silence is the mind and i feel my mind is quietest when my hands are at work doesn't matter what my hands are, yeah it doesn't matter what my hands are doing i need to be at work or i could be playing an online game basically the idea is i need to lose myself either in a game or work or this or that and it's not that i don't you know sit and like reflect i do that i write and i'm like okay this happened this is something i need to work on this is great this is bad whatever i write right but you don't necessarily need to like you know put your hands like this lie down blah 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 uh, and and that's not a popular opinion right no but i think it's a valid opinion because if you think about it and i'm going back to something you said earlier about 
how a large part of what we do at work is bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bullshit. Then, because you're doing meetings, you're doing calls, you're doing this. What's the actual work? Yeah, when you're sitting down, and I used to never block off time for just me to sit and work. I think over the years I was this person when I didn't have anything to do, I just walk around the office. Yeah. Now suddenly you're at home, and you don't have a meeting, and I would be like, okay, let me just do something which I was supposed to do, because you'd always do that in the night or early in the morning, uh, whichever suits you. Um, and I started blocking off. a couple of hours or like an hour at least every day sometimes i'd have like one day in the week or at like two three hour block of just like focused a single person uh, work time yeah and that i agree with you it's the flow you get if you just also like take off put everything on dnd and you just sit down and do that yeah um there is nothing like it um you don't even realize how that goes away it's meditative it's um uh, it's all those things that um i think Uh, no matter how long you listen to jhat you won't get to that point till yeah. which work can actually get you to yeah and i also feel like like for example i started out as a coder right and when you're writing code it's like it's like a permanent flow state so i i know what a permanent flow state is is like and then I, two years after writing code i actually moved into photoshop i started doing design right because i had opportunities and i would get like it was fa- faster to do photoshop projects than to do you know um, web dev projects so i picked them up And when I actually did Photoshop, I'd get lost again for hours, right? And sometimes it would be pointless. It was just I'm just making art, but I had to put it out, right? Again, I needed the likes, follows, blah blah blah. Otherwise, I was like, this is a wasted piece of art. And I felt so like I wouldn't notice six hours, ten hours, twelve hours, fifteen hours go by, right? I was mm. I like other people be like stress this that whatever, and I lost a lot of weight doing this. right because i just wouldn't need i'd be like what's the need to eat because you know this last finishing touch needs to be put and that finishing touch takes 3 hours so technically i was painting but you know i need to like put it online otherwise i don't get the the end result the dopamine from it um yeah. so but i don't meditate right i don't sit down and meditate and i also feel like where i am in life right now i i shouldn't take a pause right um i feel and i know this is not popular opinion i know i'm on the wrong podcast technically um, no not at all um, i i feel what you're saying and i want you to finish and I'll, i'll tell you my perspective yeah and i feel like 50 60 70s 80s by the time you and i are and i, I know there's a decade like between us uh, uh, by the time we reach 80 there'll be life extension will be at 120 like i could, i give it to you in writing right like there's so much crazy stuff going on probably you know we we'll live till like 300 plus it's I'm very it's it. very plausible right the way AI is like AI Alpha Fold. DeepMind came out something called Alpha Fold Two, right? Which can now do protein, like predict full protein folding, right? So we can hit, and every week, every month, in fact, new uh, biologic drugs are coming out. For the first time in the history of medicine, we can knock out very specific receptors, and that's mm-hmm. crazy, right? So eventually, we'll find out what causes aging, and then you knock that out, and because you knock that out, now diabetes doesn't happen, heart disease doesn't happen, etc., 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 right? It's what do i say it's just uh, it's a matter of time so i know there'll always be time to take a pause right and i feel like right now i enjoy what i do i enjoy it so much that i don't want to take a pause from it right and people like on the internet be like oh but you're stressed you you are stressed i'm like no i'm, I'm enjoying it they're like no no you 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 have to take a break otherwise you are you know you don't know you're ruining i'm like i'm not ruining my body i, I really enjoy what i do but they don't get it i sleep Eight hours. I probably sleep better than most people going to work, going to a workplace, yeah. right? Uh, I enjoy my time. I have family around me. I have my, you know, my company employees and friends around me. It's and I and I do YouTube, so I also get the fame in a way. It's the perfect place to be. I don't know why people complain. You know, the problem with people going against. I think we we deal too much in absolutes, right? Yeah. We and, and actually one of the things we, we kind of started this whole chat off with is that. is that you're either doing this or you're not doing it yeah but what we don't really realize is how you take a pause in life like you said it's work it's also the synergy that you found yeah and the fact that you do sleep long enough you know if you're that person who's working 24/7 yeah and not sleeping you would feel that stress you would feel that strain but if you kind of balance that all that stuff or if you balance there's nothing from life or for yourself or for work that you are compromising on then you have found points yeah it might not be what is traditionally called points of pause um but you have found that um 
the problem is that oftentimes we compromise on one of these three things, right? We say, okay, work will compromise or self and self, we never count. We say work and life. I'm like, no, one second, there's self. Yeah. Um, but I feel, and I feel like, and that's where it goes off. And I feel like most of that is inauthentic bullshit work. Like imagine yeah. waking up, sleeping five hours to do an assignment that the teacher's anyway not going to like even look at. Mm-hmm. And you have to submit it because you get a number of points. And if you don't get that, you don't pass. Yeah. That's the, like I've seen this happen at work, right? Somebody will hire, like some manager will hire too many extra people in their team. This happens in enterprises. Um, mm-hmm. And then they see these three extra people in their team and like, you know, these people are doing nothing. Let me just give them some random shit to do. Okay, they'll yeah. give one data analysis and they'll be like, every day, give me a report. Yeah. Right? So there's one YouTube data analyst guy who worked with me for a bit and then worked with Zomato because he said I worked with Varun's channel and then Zomato liked that and they hired him. Mm. After three months, they had learned everything he had to teach them. So he came in as a consultant. They learned everything he had to teach them. Then they were like, we're paying you 50k a month. Send us reports every week of YouTube. He's like, but you can just open the YouTube console and check it out. They're like, no, no, send us the report. So he'd manually go, take screenshots, download it, send it to them. And then he's like, what the fuck am I doing? And you have to send it every day morning at 9 a.m. So he's like, I'm wasting... Mm. Yeah, so that's that's what 90% of the world is doing, right? So I agree. If you're doing that, then for sure, right? Like, t- ideally, you should quit. Your life should be a should 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 be a pause from that. And also, it's like people say, "No, I'm not taking enough breaks. I'm not taking pauses." And I'm like, you don't have to suddenly take days off. Yeah, you might just take 10 minutes between meetings to kind of recalibrate where your head is, and you might just take um, periods of time when you're not. So the problems we jump from work to pick up the phone and going into state dopamine to dopamine, you're not letting it rest. Yeah. Um, like I do this very often. My favorite thing to do is between meetings, I'll come out, rub my dog's belly and come back. <laughs> um, for me, that's like, that's a, the best pause ever, right? You take about a couple of minutes and she's happy, I'm happy. I do that too. Um, I go to the fridge. Like I don't eat anything. I just go to the fridge, open it. I'm like, change of environment. Then I go back. <laughs> that's all you need. Uh, the problem is, and I, and I forgot who I heard this from. I think it was, um, there's Robin Arjun, if I'm pronouncing her name right. Um, she was the chief, one of the chief trainers at Peloton, and she said this. She said the problem with hustle culture is actually our interpretation of hustle culture. We take it as, oh, I will work 24/7, I will do all of this, but no, hustling is good. What we take from it is the is the bad part. Yeah, and I think that's so true, right? We like. Don't either it's, either it's like toxic, everything is toxic, right? toxic uh, hustle culture, toxic positivity, everything is toxic because you're looking at it in, in like absolutes. absolutes and you're not saying one second, everybody has their own way of doing it. Mm, I agree. I agree. You know, I can keep going on with this, but as always, I have an eye on the clock yeah. um, and I'm like, I want to keep enough for doing this again because I feel that we're going to do this often enough uh, and I'm going to pull you into this one. and. Hope maybe the next time we'll do this in person, I will finally cross that barrier of actually doing. We have a studio. Um, <laughs> if you come yeah. here. I'm, I might just do a traveling studio. Uh, you never know. Yeah. I might have a setup. I'll move like in a van. And do that. Yeah. We'll do a van. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. In Bombay, b- bad idea because it's always going to be noisy. But um, thanks a ton for doing this, man. I mean, it's, um, it's always, I love talk, having this conversation with you because I always feel that I kind of come out of it with perspective, which is not, Ever traditional perspective, not generalized perspective, but it's it's perspective we can all kind of learn from. So thanks a lot for coming on Take a Pause. For sure. I mean, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, Duki. Uh, this has been fun and I enjoyed the conversation. I hope you did too. I hope you enjoyed my chat with Varun Maya. It's got so much for you to unpack and even for me to kind of run into as well. Lots more chats like this as well as some interesting perspectives from me coming soon on the channel. So don't forget to hit subscribe and smash that bell icon.